Welcome. Welcome to First Baptist Church, located at 190 Main Street in Brattleboro, Vermont. We are so glad that you've joined us this morning to worship with us. We are handicapped accessible. We have a wonderful Sunday school program. And all of you are welcome to come and worship here. If you need a ride, please call the church office at 802-254-9566. And one of us will be happy to come and pick you up. But again, welcome to the worship of the Lord. Let all people praise the God of all nations. Bring your joys and sorrows to this holy embrace. Amen. Please join me in our congregational praise time and sing, Open My Eyes That I May See, number 381. You'll find this in your bulletins insert for your hymn of uh, hymnals. 381. Open my eyes that I may see.
Heavenly Father, oh, we thank you for this moment of silence with you, with Jesus Christ our Lord, where through prayer we can come and pour out our heart, our souls, our hidden fears, our needs. Lord, you understand suffering, for you suffered among us through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray for those people 
in the recent shootings who lost their innocent lives, just as Jesus did. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for letting us know of salvation, of life after death, and that you died for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, please continue to watch over us, help guide us on the pathway that you would lead us. We pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen.
It is in our Savior's name that we pray. Amen. Please join me in our hymn of preparation. It's I have decided to follow Jesus, number 376, not I surrender all. So it's I, and you have this as an insert in your bulletins. I have decided to follow Jesus, number 376. Like servants who are waiting for their 
master to come back from a wedding feast. And when he comes and knocks, they will open the door for him at once. And how happy are those servants whose master finds them awake and ready when he returns. I tell you, he will take off his coat, have them sit down, and will wait on them. How happy they are if he finds them ready, even if he should come at midnight or even later. And you can be sure that if the owner of a house knew the time when the thief would come, he would not let the thief break into his house. And Jesus said, for you too must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you are not expecting him. This ends the scripture readings for this morning. No doubt about it. Jesus will return one day. He says, I am coming at an hour you don't expect. Get ready. Will you be ready? Will you be ready for Jesus like the good servants who waited for their master to come home? Are you willing to put our Lord first in your life like the faithful servants who waited up until after midnight? Or are you a fool? Are you a fool not believing? Listen to the following story. A certain Lord kept a fool or a jester in his house for his own amusement. He gave a beautiful hand-carved staff to his fool and he told him to keep it until he met a greater fool than himself. If he ever met such a person, the master said, he should give him the staff. Well, not many years later, the Lord fell sick, and his fool came to see him and was told that his Lord's illness was terminal. And when the fool looked upon his master, he asked him, And whither will thou go? On a long journey, said the Lord. And when will you come back again? Within a month? The fool asked. No, said the master. Within a year? Asked the fool. No, never, answered the master. You mean, master, you are dying? Going away forever? Said the fool. And you have made no provisions before you leave? No plans? No nothing? Here, take my staff, sir. For sadly, you are a greater fool than I. Are you foolish? Have you made plans for your future? And I'm talking about your future in heaven. Because Jesus is coming. We don't know when or where or how. But the Bible tells us that our Lord Jesus Christ is coming. And Jesus is warning us to be ready. Don't be like the foolhardy master in the story I just shared. Because you have not planned for the life to come after this one. Jesus has told us over and over again that he will return one day. And our Bible lesson this morning is a reminder to be prepared and ready. We need to keep our lamps lit like the men waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that when Jesus comes and knocks, we can immediately open the door for him and welcome him with open arms, knowing that we 
we have done everything in this life of ours to please Him. There are a few things, though, that we do know about the second coming. One is secrecy. Jesus said the Son of Man will come at an hour when you are not expecting Him. You know, the year 1000, the year 1000 was filled with predictions of the coming of Jesus. It has been recorded that people were so sure of the Lord's coming in the year 1000 that they didn't even plant their crops, they didn't clean their houses, they just waited because he was coming at midnight in the year 1000. In the 1500s, Martin Luther wrote this, we have reached the time of the white horse of the apocalypse. This world won't last any longer. A little known fact was that Christopher Columbus was a student of biblical prophecy. And he wrote a volume called The Book of Prophecies, in which Christopher Columbus predicted that the world would end in 1556. We're still here. In 1800, William Miller predicted that the world would end in 15, 15, excuse me, 1844. And half a million Adventists awaited the end of the world. And reportedly, some disciples climbed up to the mountaintops, hoping for a head start to heaven. Others were gathered in the graveyards, planning to join their departed loved ones. And in 1992, Harold Camping predicted the end again. And again, nothing happened. So Harold changed his date of the end of the world to 1993 and waited, and nothing happened. And then he changed it again to 1994. You know, all these people had one thing in common. They must not have read the gospel that we read today, because no one knows the day or the hour. And our Lord's point is simply this, be ready all the time. It is not for us to determine the when of the Lord's coming. It is for us to be expectant of His coming, that we might be found accomplishing what the Master has called us to do. Another thing we know is that Jesus' return is going to be all about selection. Two men will be in the field. One man will be taken and the other left behind. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and one left behind. You know, the first thing I realized is that Jesus describes ordinary people doing ordinary everyday activities. So what, you might ask me, what, Pastor Sue, is the selection based upon? Well, obviously, it's based upon something internal, something within your heart that sets you apart. In the book of John, chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, we know this so well. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And whoever believes in him is not condemned. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already 
because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. You know, if these words, if these words are true, think about it, then the selection has already taken place before the day of the Lord's arrival. And this selection was not made by him, but by every individual. Each person who has chosen to put their trust in Christ for salvation has selected him. And if we want to be one of those chosen on that day of reckoning, we must trust with all our hearts that the sacrifice Jesus made on the cross is sufficient for our salvation. That our belief in Jesus Christ is sufficient for our salvation. A Christian commentator tells about a frontier town where a horse was tied up to a buggy and he bolted and he ran away with a wagon carrying a little boy. And seeing the child in danger, a young man risked his life to catch the horse and stop the wagon. Well, the child who was saved grew up to be a criminal. And one day he stood before a judge to be sentenced for a serious crime. But the prisoner recognized the judge as the man who years before had saved his life. So he pleaded for mercy on that experience. But these words from the bench silenced his plea. Young man, back then I was your savior. Today I am your judge and I must sentence you to be hanged. One day, Jesus Christ will say to rebellious sinners, during your long life of grace that God has given you, I was your Savior, but today I am your judge. Wow. Finally, Jesus makes it clear that when he does return, the day will be a surprise. Therefore, keep watch, our Savior says, because you do not know what day your Lord will come. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have left his house to be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. You know, notice that Jesus takes it further than just saying that we don't know when. He says the time will be when we do not expect Him. Throughout our lesson, Jesus has taken care to compare the day of his return as an ordinary day. Not on January 1st, 2000, when everybody thought all the computers were going to crash and Jesus was going to come. It didn't happen, did it? No. Jesus explains that he will return on a day like the one Noah got into the, the ark while weddings and funerals and family meals and plowing were going on just as usual. Jesus uses the example of being prepared for a thief. How do you prepare for a thief? Well, if you're going to be prepared, it has to be always, doesn't it? The point is, that Jesus wants us to be doing or trying to do the right thing all of the time. And if you knew the day of the coming, how would you spend it? 
How would you, what would you do different? Would you tell your neighbors about Jesus? Would you reach out to non-believers? Would you give more to helping the poor and the needy? Would you commit yourself fully and completely to the Lord? Would you immediately straighten out your life and let go of the earthly things that come between you and God? Would you become, if you knew the day was coming, would you become more kind, compassionate, and caring? Let me ask you then, why can't you do all of these things anyway? Right now. Right now. Start today. Live each moment as if Jesus coming would happen during your next breath. Jesus has promised that he will return. Do you believe him? Will your life reflect that when he does come, that you have done everything within your power to meet his expectations? So embrace, embrace the power of our Savior Jesus Christ. Surrender the earthly things that separate you from our Lord because Jesus Christ is coming. God bless you all. Amen. Please join me. In the next hymn, number 393, Nearer My God to Thee. Please rise if you are able.
closer to Thee. We feel joy when we make Jesus a part of our daily lives. God will answer your prayers and give you what you most need. Work for justice and peace wherever you go.